Hey, welcome back to another video for our photo app. In the last video, we created a thumbnail from our camera. In this, we're going to update this program so that it will save a high-resolution version of the photo to our memory, our storage memory on the phone, and then it will automatically load that into the image view. So we'll have a better looking picture and it'll be long term. So let's get back into our code and our um, actual tutorial here. So we're in the Android developers page here. We're talking about photo basics. And we just finished up last video with get the thumbnail. So let's scroll down the page and see what the next section says. So now we want to save the full size photo. It will provide you a fully named uh, version of where the file saved and then you can put it in your gallery. The first thing we need to do is add some more permissions. So you can see that we're going back into the manifest file and we are requesting that we can write external storage. So you can't just automatically start putting files on a person's phone. You have to ask them for it. So let's copy this and switch back and find our manifest. So our manifest is all already got one line that says we want to use the camera and now we're going to write to the external storage. This also gives implicit guarantees that you can read from the storage as well. So both read and write are granted in this one line. So I'll save the results. Okay, let's go on and see what the next part is. So it says here there's some more details about using some more specific things, but let's move on. We don't need that. So now we're going to have a new function that we're going to call create image file and we're going to save it looks like a JPEG image and put it into a certain storage directory. So this gets a little complicated too if you haven't seen anything about authority of where your directories are saved that'll be another. But let's go ahead and add a uh, new section to our code. So I'm going to copy here and let's switch into our Android app. So back into main activity. So where would be a good place for this to go? So we got dispatch intent let's let's put it below this and we've got ourselves a new function so we've got a string called current photo path that looks like a global variable for our app so let's cut that out and put it at the top of the page so we'll save that in there so current photo path so that is the name of our file that is saved so I'm going to put in a note to say what that is for so it is the name of the file that is saved by our camera Let's go back down to the bottom here and start changing some things here. So we are going to have a function that returns a file. So let's do imports here. We're going to import the class file. It looks like IO exception also needs to be imported. What else? We're going to use a timestamp and a date. So we will import our date format. Ooh, it looks like we have two choices for importing. I'm going to pick the first one called Java text. And let's see, the date format, let's go with that one. Java util looks like the right one. Okay, we got environment. Okay, all the imports are done. So let's see if we can understand what's going on. So the goal here is to create an image file and return a file name. Now we've got ourselves a timestamp. So the reason why we use a timestamp is because we want to have a unique image file name. Not everything can be called test picture. And so we're going to attach the actual date into our file name. Our storage directory, we're going to save that data. To get that, we have to go to a special uh, Android environment variable and directory pictures. Well, isn't that handy? We can find out where the pictures are stored. We're going to create a file. We're going to use the file name, attach a JPEG, and the directory where it goes. And then we'll get a current path and the image will return the image. So this will create the file for us. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit further. So now it says here, with this method available to create a file, we can now invoke an, the intent to take a different way of doing a photo. So we're going to replace the original uh, method that was created in a previous video. So let's, uh, let's copy all of this code here and let's overwrite the stuff that was in our previous video. So we have dispatch picture take intent. Let's delete that and paste in the new guy. So let's see, request photo. Was that the same? This was called request image capture. So it looks like we've changed our naming scheme. So let's 
cut this one out and replace the original. Okay, so we're now calling it Request Take Photo. Remember, this doesn't have to be anything special. You can call it XYZ if you want. It just has to have a unique number. Okay, so back down to our work here. So, uh, let's see. This is probably going to be changed. So all of this code in here is going to go away. Let's see what's going on in the dispatch. We're going to take a new intent to get a picture. Uh, let's see. We're going to get a photo file. It's going to create the image. And then we come down to the bottom here. So it says, so it says here, uh, if we have an I.O. exception. In other words, you couldn't create the file. We're supposed to put something in there. So let's make a toast. So a toast will be the message that we can create and tell the user something went wrong. If we did create the file, then we have the URI. So let's see if we can import URI. File provider. Oh, let's try that one. File provider. Now it says here we have to customize this. So the authority for our file provider is the name of our application. So what is the name of my application? Let's go look in the Java code. It tells us there it is EDU GCU Shad Sluter Photo App. So let's come back into our code here and replace these first parts with my name. So edu dot gcu dot Shad Sluter. And then we'll stick with file provider for the end. That's good. And we're going to take the picture and we're going to have a photo URI returned and then we'll start the activity. Okay, we'll save that. That looks pretty good so far. Let's go back into our, our code here. We still got to do some more stuff. It says here you have to configure the file provider. You want to read about file providers? Go ahead and click there. Uh, I can kind of help you through though. So we're going to put some more stuff into the manifest. So we have a provider this time. Let's copy the section called provider and notice it says put it inside the brackets for the application area. So we'll copy this portion and switch into our manifest. So manifests certainly does have a section called application. So we can put that before or the end. Let's put it in here, provider. Now we got another issue. So it says, what's the, uh, what's the authorities? So just like I had earlier, I have to put in my name. So edu.gcu dot shad sluter and then file provider so that should match the code that we put in just a minute ago well, we got another red arrow uh, let's see it says uh, you're trying to resolve a directory into a file called file paths which says it doesn't exist well let's go and see where that was supposed to be so it is a resource area so we have a folder over here called resources and it says I'm looking for a resource folder called XML. XML doesn't exist, so let's make one. So let's go to new, and I'm looking for directory, directory, and we'll call it XML. Okay, so what's inside XML? It's a file called file underscore paths. So let's make a new file. So let's see, an XML resource is probably what it's called, and we'll call it file underscore paths dot XML. It's in the directory called XML. And click OK. Now this is interesting. XML is automatically interpreted by the program to be a layout. It's not really a layout. It's just an XML file. So let's go look at the text. And there is the text. What are we supposed to put in there? Let's find out. So let's scroll down a little further. It says here, in your file paths XML file, there's supposed to be some content. And let's copy the content that they give us. So I'll switch back and delete everything that was in their XML file and paste in the new guy. So let's see if we can understand what it was. So let's see, scroll a little bit here. It says our external file path is called my images. Looks to me like we have to update this as well. .com example obviously is not the name of my application again, so let's replace that with my edu gcu dot shad sluter dot photo app. Okay, so that'll tell me 
where we're going to save these pictures. It'll save it in a directory underneath my application. So that is the authority for uh, giving access to the application to save. Wow. So you thought this was going to be easy. They have a lot of complicated moving parts. So it looks like we've got all this stuff here. If, if you typed any of this wrong, your app will crash, of course, and you'll have to interpret some strange uh, error message in the log. So good luck on that. Okay, so now we have to come back and see if we can dispatch this picture taken and make the uh, response work properly. So let's go look in our activity result. Now this seems to be where the tutorial broke down. I uh, got to this part and then I started to get lost. So maybe smarter people than I could be able to finish this, but I, I had to figure out a different way. So let's go and take a look at on request. So the request image capture no longer valid. Instead, we're using request take photo. So I'm going to replace that. And it says here, we're going to uh, try to replace this with a file name. So I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to get rid of all of the code inside. Okay, so we're going to modify the internals of this activity result method. So I want to accomplish three things here. I want to get the bitmap from the file name. So the file name was taken from a previous uh, method below. Then once I have that file name, I'm going to set the image into the image view. And then the third is I want to show the file name into the text view message area. So let's get started with the first part. So I'm going to create a bitmap object. And uh, I'll just name it as image taken. The object that I'm looking for, or the class that's built into Android, is this thing called bitmap factory. And you can see that it's coming from android.graphics. Let's take a look at the options. If I choose a period, what can I do with a bitmap factory? Well, I have some options here called decode file. I think that's the right one that I want to pick from. So let's choose this, and it is expecting to have a file name. That looks handy. So what is our file name? If I type in M, I get the current photo path. And as you recall, that current photo path was created by a method down below. So we have this thing called create image file, and it set the value for us here. So as long as that was set correctly, this will work. Of course, if it didn't set, get set correctly, the, the program will crash. All right, so now we want to do a image into the image view. So this next section is going to require three statements. First of all, I'm going to get a variable or define a variable called IV photo. And then we're going to get that uh, value from the layout of what the ID is for this uh, view. Then the third thing is we're going to use the set image bitmap method. And that will allow us to assign a, um, an image container. And so this will display the photo. Then for the third item, we're going to show the actual um, text in our text view message. So it will show up as a TV message as our variable name. We'll have to once more get the ID number from the layout. So find view by ID. And then the last is to set the text. So the text should be a string if it's a file pathway. All right, so let's see how this thing works. Let's go ahead and run the program. And uh, let's see what the results are. So here's the program. Let's go ahead and take a photo. And it looks like the application just crashed. So let's go see if we can find out what's going on. So we'll look in the log cat and browse through the list and see if there's anything that is comprehensible. So we selected error from the uh, choices. And the first line here that gives us some help is failed to find the configured root that contains. This doesn't work. So there's something wrong with this pathway that I chose. Let's go check it out and look in file paths and see if there's anything odd that we can identify. So I'm looking at the pathway. It says edu shad Sluter, photo app. And this thing called dot name doesn't seem to make sense. The name of the app is photo app, so I think I just forgot to delete dot name. Let's save that and try again. So here we are. We're back in the launched application again. I'll try to take a photo. So the camera opens, and there's the kitchen. Let's see, I'll click a photo, and I think we're doing better this time. Let's check mark, and there it is. We see the photo, 
and we can also see the path name for where the file was saved. So it looks like the take option is now working properly. We have a higher resolution image and we have it saved to our phone's memory. So that kind of wraps up this video. In the next we're going to have to do the load button so we can load a picture that was taken and saved in the gallery and then we will display that as well.